psalm of the day is Psalm 4. It is a responsive reading, so I encourage you to pull the Bibles out of the pews in front of you and look for Psalm 4. It's found on page 490. Otherwise, you'll notice the music section of the Bible.
some precious antiquities. When Christians are persecuted around the world, when good friends of mine are suffering because of surgeries and trauma, what are we to do? What are we to think? How does our faith withstand all the tragedy in the world? Well, as we begin today, let me first lower your expectations. Full and complete answers to some of the vexing questions of faith might be offered in some other churches, but not here. If you are looking for 100% guarantees of God, there are plenty of places that will give you those guarantees, give you those answers. But this place is not one of them. For us, for especially me, the honest thing to say is that the answer to some of these questions is known only by God. We can present our best guesses. We can scrutinize scripture. We can consult the brightest minds in the business. But in the end, the only thing we can say for sure, 100%, is that with these questions, only God knows the answers. And our job as people of faith is to trust God. On the other hand, let us not be too quick to discount our own knowledge of God. We have a long history of, with God. We have time-tested scripture about God. And not to toot our own horn, but we are pretty bright people. I have seen your test scores, and they are pretty high. I have seen many of you deal with tragedy in your lives, and most of you have survived, if not thrived. Just last week, I heard a story from someone in this church, a great story of redemption, a story of survival from drugs and crime and jail, who is now seeing light, where before he only saw dark. So we have some resources to draw on for the tough questions that confront us. We're not little innocent Christians who have never dealt with tragedy, who have never spent days in the desert of suffering. Oh yes, we have been there. And yet, we are still here, worshiping God. So we do have something to say about these tough questions of faith. On Wednesday, after I hung up the phone from talking to this member of the church, I went to the scriptures for today. And the first thing I read was that psalm that all of you just read with me, the psalm for the third Sunday of Easter. It starts like this. Answer me when I call, O God of my right, you gave me room when I was in distress. Call it a coincidence or call it a God thing, but to me, it sounds like the psalmist was asking the very same question that we are asking. Answer me, O oh God, in my distress. 
people who are 55 and older. And I didn't know that, so now I'm 56, so I missed out on a whole year of to reign 
And Jesus gives the idea that even though God wants justice, God is not vindictive. So maybe this nudges us a little closer to the answer, but not completely because it tells us what not to do, but it doesn't really give us an outlet for our human need to respond. What should we do? Last Sunday, many of you were here when that walkie-talkie taught and started squawking right in the middle of my sermon. And I was ready to respond. In a few milliseconds, I considered what to do. First, I tried to ignore it, but that was not a reaction. That was doing nothing. And it kept squawking along, so I knew I had to do something. And I thought of a several options right in the middle of that happening. My first option was to just pick it up and throw it out with west doors. I knew I could make the opening. <laughs> Then I thought, no, that would be even more distracting. distracting. And then I thought, well, maybe I can get the battery out real quick. And I saw it, and I don't know how to open those doors. They're so hard to open anyway. So I thought, I can't do that. Then I thought, well, no, maybe I'll just drop it and then crush it with my foot. That would be a good reaction because I'm a man. scale of 110 in terms of tragedy, the walkie-talkie incident barely rated a 1. It was just a nuisance, really, but it does give me a suggestion. It suggests, I think, that at any tragedy, we need to find the button to push so that we can react at least a little bit. We need to push that button so it makes us feel a little bit better. And I think we can find that button when we understand our identity under God. The New Testament maybe helps us out here. The reading from 1 John. John writes, See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. <coughs> the reason the world does not know us is that it does not know God. I think maybe the button we must push in the face of tragedy, in the face of suffering, <coughs> is the button to remind us we are children of God. And the world, the suffering world, does not know us because the world does not all know God. Our role then, the button we are to push then, is to show the world who God is. The world will know God through us. God's children. If we react to the tragedy, if we react to the suffering by pushing that button, then we react in a positive way. You and I cannot change what happens to the Coptic Christians in Egypt. We have no control over it. We can only control our own reactions. We can only push our own buttons. So when we push them, we must react as children of God with love and with care, with hope. <coughs> Definitely. Courage. 
know exactly what God has to say on the matter because we want to know right now. But to do that is to forget maybe what that old, old psalmist said. The psalmist who observed oh God who gave me room in my distress. God gives us room in our distress. We have a wide open space to wonder about the intricacies of God's love. So there's no rush to judgment to know everything. What's your hurry? Enjoy the open spaces that God gives us. Enjoy the mystery. We have the questions. And only God has the answers. And remember, it is our job to only trust God. So let us be like the Psalms. When the tragedy, when the suffering swirled around her and she could find no answers, she didn't abandon God. What she did was a really great thing. You read it in the last verse of this song. What did she do? She went to sleep. I will lie, will lie down and sleep in peace, she wrote. For you alone, O oh Lord, make me lie down in safety. You want an answer to the questions? When you go to sleep, go to sleep with the invitation in your mind to allow the peace of God to sweep over you. Maybe that is where the prayer came about. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray to the Lord my soul to keep peace and safety till 